Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the online worship of Word and Sacrament of St. Paul's and Nativity Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania. We are blessed that you are joining us today and pray that you will feel our Lord's love as you receive his word and his meal. Nativity's Council will be meeting on Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the Northex. Helen T. from Nativity is still in the hospital, as is Bernice M. from St. Paul's. Jim W. and Marion K. are at home, continuing on hospice care. Please keep their family in your prayers. Last year at this time, we were praying for Savannah and her daughter, Ava, who was born so prematurely. I am pleased to share with you that this weekend she is celebrating her first birthday and she is a healthy and happy, beautiful little girl. We keep in our prayers Brandy and Mark as they move from Texas to Tennessee for a new job, asking for safe passage and a good new beginning for them in their new place and in their new work. And now, dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us worship Jesus. Always remembering our baptism, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Amen. Dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us confess our sins trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God. We confess that we are captive to doubt and fear bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our siblings as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, know that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, 
fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked up, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord, and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. A reading from Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of our mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as God loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. For everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey, boys and girls. Um, this is the children's message for Sunday, August 8th, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. And I'm doing something a little bit different today. We'll see how it comes out. I'm over at Broadcasting Square. And we hear in the psalm that we are to taste and see. And so I was over here because I, I needed to um, stop into Barnes and Noble and get a, a book that I had ordered. And in this part of the mall, you can see all of the different restaurants that are here, right? Places where you can actually come and see and taste. Um, all sorts of different kinds of food, right? Everything from fast food to um, medium-sized food to the um, fine dining, if you will. And um, this is Panera's over here, and they have a very special place in our hearts because um, Robin Dorns, Mrs. Dorns, is the one who every week goes over and she will um, do the she will do the bread, pick it up. Now, we don't do our bread ministry right now because of, of COVID and the pandemic, but um, she collects it every week, and then we take it and we um, distribute it during our food pantry. So I was thinking, what's maybe one of your favorite kind of foods to have? Is there something that you especially enjoy? You can pause this for a second and maybe talk among your family. Um, is it something that maybe your grandmother had made for you or a favorite ice cream that you have or you know maybe it's a happy meal at, at, um, at a fast food restaurant or maybe it's I don't know what take a moment and, and talk about your favorite foods I have to say that one of my favorite foods and this is the remainder part of our psalm for today it's taste and see that the Lord is good and that's the gift of Jesus' meal that comes to us in Holy Communion. It's just a little bit of bread, a little wafer, a little bit of wine, or a little bit of grape juice. And it is amazing and wonderful. And it fills us for the journey. And it brings us the gifts of love from God, the idea that Jesus is always with us, that our sins are forgiven, and that we have everlasting life with our Lord. So. Um, come and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good and have your Holy Communion today with your family, either online or in-person worship. But know that Jesus is with you all the time and that he gives himself to you 
in love and in care. Let's pray. Good and gracious Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for loving us so very much. And thank you for giving us the best meal ever, your body and blood given and shed for us as we receive it in Holy Communion. Thank you, Jesus, for being our host. Thank you, Jesus, for being our meal. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. In your precious and holy name we pray, Lord. Amen. All right. Did you figure out what is your second favorite food after Jesus? Let me know. God bless and keep you. Until next week, boys and girls. Grace to you and peace, dear ones, beloved of Christ. From God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, lively and with us daily. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good, is what we hear from the psalmist today. What comes to mind when you hear the phrase, taste and see? A favorite food? A favorite restaurant? A food memory that transports you to another time? Something maybe in your grandmother's kitchen, picking berries and eating some in the field, that first bite into a juicy peach in the summertime, the smell of bread baking, that first taste of ice cream when your favorite stand opens up in the spring. Food gives us life. I must confess that I don't always make the best food choices. So often I eat on the fly, not taking the time to prepare a healthy meal and setting time aside to savor it. Now that I've confessed it, what do I do? Preparing for this week's sermon was helpful in providing encouragement to me, and I will try to do better with the food necessary for life. God desires a good life for us and wants us to care for this temple of our body that is created by our awesome God. We have good instructions for this God-given guidance in our reading from 1 Kings 19, 4-8. If you read chapter 18 in 1 Kings, you hear of Elijah's contest with the prophets of Baal. God triumphs, and now Elijah is on the run for his life. As you can imagine, he is very tired and just about ready to call it quits. We hear that Elijah goes into the wilderness, sits down under a broom tree after he asks the Lord to take away his life, and he falls asleep. Then an angel of the Lord tells him, get up and eat, doing this not once, but twice. God's instructions for our physical well-being is wilderness, rest, and nourishment. These are the restorative practices that give Elijah strength for the journey. These will also give us strength for life. Usually, we think about the wilderness as a harsh place, one we wish to avoid or to get out of as quickly as possible if we find ourselves in the wilderness. But wilderness is also where many divine encounters occur. Remember Hagar and Ishmael? Israel's wandering for 40 years, Jesus' 40 days after his baptism, the early Christians in the desert. We do well to remember that the second part of this verse in the psalm is taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. God is concerned equally with our physical and spiritual well-being. In many ways, the wilderness is a spacious, blank page, a space of quietness that is lacking the stimulation of the rest of the world, where we spend so much time. The wilderness is the place where, if we are willing, we can be still and know God. Are we willing to be in a place of not knowing, 
where there are no easy answers or quick fixes. This means giving up control, and that's not easy for most of us, is it? Remember the saying, let go and let God. Are we willing to let go, to let God, to trust in God? Take these three deep breaths for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, maybe even more than once, and wait patiently on the Lord. We too may receive a divine messenger bringing us a word from the Lord. With Elijah, we hear the importance of sleep, to lay down the burdens of the holy work to which God has called us, to allow a deep rest in body, <clears throat> mind, and spirit. Elijah, in spite of his request of God, doesn't die, but he does sleep. We need rest too, genuine rest, crucial to our healing and health that can restore us so that we can be more open to what calls us to do from God as we move into the future. I don't know about you, but I need to hear this too. I'm going to try to be better about sleep trying to get through. How about you? And we say in advance, thank you, Jesus. Back to food. The angel God sent says, get up and eat. Not get up and go back to work or get up and get going. God gives Elijah a simple meal, a cake and water. Hmm. Sounds similar to our Holy Communion, doesn't it? Food for life. If we don't receive Jesus' body and blood, the journey will be too much for us, dear ones, beloved of Christ. Isn't that the truth? I need Jesus. You need Jesus. We all need Jesus. He keeps us going. Jesus tells us in the gospel reading for today, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God for that. Taste and see that the Lord is indeed good. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith, exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficulties, decisions about their future, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For correspondence officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration, for those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share our Lord's peace with one another. Beverly, the peace of the Lord be with you. Pastor, the peace of the Lord be with you also. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bonds of death, and as he promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole church exalts in boundless joy. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. Thank you. 
on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for today and all the days of your life. Thank you, Jesus. This is the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Beverly, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Pastor, the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor coronavirus, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Father, our Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal life and love. Amen. Oh, Jesus, joy.